செல்வகுமார் சார் Sir, shall we start the session? Yes, ma'am. good morning all i welcome you all for the session i would like to introduce the resource person dr k krishna kumar sir senior assistant professor vit bellur krishna kumar sir is having 4 years of research experience in anna university in computer vision apart from this sir is having industrial experience in sharepoint sql html java etc sir completed phd in anna university mit campus mtech in srm university and be in annamala university and today in the session sir is going to present um, the topic regarding machine learning in computer vision with this short introduction i once again welcome you all for the session thank you happy learning Uh, shall I start, ma'am? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, ma'am. Um, uh, so, yeah. Thank you. Okay. So I hope uh, uh, you guys are seeing my slide. Uh, Uh, good morning yes, to sir. everyone uh, uh, i am krishna kumar i am from vit vellu uh, i have done my phd in uh, video stitching so uh, uh, right now i am working as an assistant professor senior in uh, department of multimedia under a school of design so today i am going to uh, uh, present you the topic machine learning in computer vision so uh, i like to give a short uh, um, detail about computer vision uh, a, a computer vision uh, is when we are making a computer uh, think like a view uh, the environment or a scenario or the world in a way the human as view so for example uh, computer using computer vision we can uh, extract information which tells uh, what kind of image it is or uh, uh, what uh, uh, perspective the image is taken or what uh, what are all the information we will get or details we will get from the information which is captured so uh, there is a, a, a confusion whether the computer vision and image processing are same uh, thing is uh, image processing is where uh, the image is processed so that we either we get an new image or a synthesized image or we get a retrieve an information when the image which is processed it might be a pre processing or my it might be a feature uh, extraction or feature deduction on the image or a unique points so like a feature as i said feature points and edges from the corners and or the outlines of the object which is present in the image so these all things are image processing and by using this image processing techniques we can able to come up with an algorithm 
for computer vision so here the task might be uh, 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 finding an object in an image or classifying the image or segmenting the image for example uh, i need to segment a tree from the mountain so we can go with the computer vision but the use, with the use of image processing and example if i uh, uh, like to uh, point out uh, is that when the uh, human beings can able to easily differentiate uh, certain uh, pattern that is a structural pattern uh, for example from a, a building uh, with a white wall with a sky when it is a, uh, having the uh, same color pattern so a blue wall with the same color of pattern which is carried out with the sky so we can easily uh, differentiate but a system but a computer cannot and in that way we need to uh, uh, write an algorithm so that the difference between this building and the sky should be differentiated and yeah very good example i would like to point out here is this. in this image you can see that there is a a, a theme Uh, different there is a error this is because uh, of uh, uh, joining the two images this is captured from a different image and this portion of the image is captured from a diff different image so we usually call this as a multi view uh, image which is uh, stitched to uh, form a new um, image so for example a 180 degree image or a 360 degree image so here you can able to see that there is a misalignment so there is a misalignment with respect to the structure so but here you can able to see that there is no misalignment because our eye our eye is preserved to the structures but it is uh, it cannot able to identify the color pattern differences because the transition is very smooth so this is the power of the algorithm which is uh, done by the computer and even though this have joined these two images very well there is a difference in the structural information yeah so this can be this can be identified or this can be rectified using a computer vision algorithm and inside that we 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 will be using the feature uh, feature detection methods and uh, we will be using a blending method to uh, uh, smoothly transmit from one image to the another image for example here left from the left side image to the right side image so here is another difference so this previously i was showing the structural misalignment that is in a structural way the uh, the wooden uh, uh, curve has uh, having a structural difference and also this is pointed out to, uh, to us very clearly because there is a line so there is a line which uh, uh, making our eye to differentiate it. so here when we can able to see the difference between the intensity that is the pixel values so you guys can uh, clearly see that um, uh, there is a difference between the pixel information in this wood uh, in this stone wall and to this stone wall this is also a image captured from a different camera and this is the image which is captured from the different camera so here there will be a portion which is overlap that is having the same portion but because there is too much difference the exposure difference the here exposure means the intensity value at the time when the image is captured so uh, for example uh, there is a light uh, uh, you uh, you can see that there is a, uh, a light behind me and we can able to easily uh, clearly see that there is a difference between between the portion uh, to this shoulder and a portion to this shoulder this is because the light which is falling on the object yeah so here the same thing uh, the light the light is uh, uh, which is falling on the wall uh, and uh, even though the, 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 uh, the light is distributed in a equal way but the way the camera is viewing that wall yeah the way, the way the uh, camera is positioned to capture the wall so this will differentiate the portion at which the wall is capturing the uh, image uh, at the which uh, the camera is capturing the wall and because of that because of the difference in the intensity value so this portion is differentiated this 
cannot be identified by the naked eye that is the, our human eye but a computer a well uh, uh, organized algorithm can identify the difference it is it is very simple simply we can put that when i uh, have a two matrix two set of matrix with a, a 60 cross 60 matrix i can easily find the difference between uh, uh, the uh, first of portion uh, to the next of portion by writing an algorithm that ca- calculate the difference between these pixels if there will be a differentiation between the pixel from the one neighborhood to the another neighborhood for example one cross one to one cross two in a limited differentiated uh way that is the discontinuity will be limited even for example it will be limited to two or three if it is varying too much from the uh, pixel values to the previous pixel values that is for example 10 here you can easily clearly see the differences so here we can able to see that there is a kind of a blue shaded black stone but here we can able to see that it is a brown shaded uh stone but these two uh, uh, the stones which is of same pattern but because of the intensity difference we can able to see that the color is differentiated this can be easily uh, identified by using a computer vision algorithm and this can be easily rectified or by using a blending algorithm that is also a image processing algorithm inside the computer vision okay so this is the difference this is the difference between uh, image processing and computer vision and this is uh, what a uh, uh, computer vision can do so by combining or uh, one or more image processing algorithm we can able to come up with a new computer vision algorithm so there are some applications uh, we have uh, in computer vision uh, uh, app, uh, uh, based uh, uh, system so first thing is image classification where we will be classifying whether the uh, image for example if it is a um, uh, uh, either the uh, image is having a dog or a cat or a elephant so it's a, it's a kind of animal classification or a flower classification or a fruit classification so next comes an updated version image classification with the localization here uh, we will be in the previous uh, application what we will be doing is that we will be uh, finding the uh, what type of image it is in, in, in which category it will fall under whether it will be uh, a, a dog or it will be a cat or uh, for example if i take a fruit whether it is an apple or is a banana so if we need to update that we need to low we need to find the position of the particular object or position of that particular object by which we are classifying the image for example there will be an image which has a, a four dogs so we we can easily classify that particular uh, image into a, a dog uh, uh, classif- uh, dog group uh, that is we will be labeling labeling that uh, image as a dog so but we need to uh, find where is the Uh, where is a dog present in an image so at that time we can ca- come up with this application that image classification with the localization so by using this position by using the position of the uh, object uh, here object might be an animal or a fruit or a flower anything so by uh, uh, getting that particular position of an object we can easily classify the image in this um, scenario this particular computer vision algorithm that is the image classification with the localization is used in many uh, uh, in many uh, uh, products for example uh, we can able to use this in a, um, virtual reality application for, uh, a, with a uh, with a real time video we can able to use this application so that we can track a particular object and where is the position of the we can able to easily fetch the x y coordinate of that object so for that we can able to use this particular application so then comes the object deduction so object deduction uh, is where there is an image there is a n number of objects but i need to find which object is falling under which label so for example there will be a cat there will be a dog but i need to differentiate this, those two animals and i need to mark that i need to label that uh, 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 object in the image so at that time we can go for this object detection then comes the object segmentation 
see augment segmentation uh, there are uh, many uh, applications where we need to segment uh, a particular image into two portions for example one uh, one big uh, um, application right now is currently uh, very popular is uh, uh, road lane uh, uh, accident detection or uh, prevention uh, algorithm or a surveillance uh, application where we need to uh, segment the road and the lane and opposite lane from the uh, there is there will be two lanes and uh, we need to differentiate the which lane is uh, for which purpose so these uh, these uh, these in this application we can use object segmentation so then comes the image colorization this is one of the most uh, currently one of the most popular uh, application which is research and um, which is using uh, machine learning deep learning uh, Uh, uh to come up with a new algorithm to improve uh, the old images for example i will be having an old image and i need to colorize those images by using uh, so many other images i can able to easily color the uh, image which is I, i which i am having in my hand by using machine learning and deep learning algorithms so then comes the image reconstruction so this uh, image reconstruction uh, right now which is very popular is that, um, even uh, some many big companies like google or facebook and apple they are coming with algorithms like if i tend to remove the eye patch so for example i have an image of, of my face if i remove this one i, I just given a white shade into my like, i this eye and this particular eye or only one eye uh, so i if i give the image as an input so i can able to get the image that is a fit a new eye that is a, that is matching with the eye the which is have which is not patched off so or also if i pass over both the eyes with the help of the nose face shape and the structure of my face the eyes uh, which is already available in the database which is trained already so will be giving a new patch of eye to my face so this 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 is a kind of a rema- image reconstruction uh, where we can able to use in the uh, images which is uh, um, destructed uh, by means of uh, uh, natural uh, uh, calamities or uh, uh, um, network uh, 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 trans uh, uh, transmission in in means of network transmission when images uh, is received with the uh, kind of uh, uh need for a kind of reconstruction so at that time we can go for this image reconstruction so these are the ima- these are certain applications where which is a um uh, kind of a uh, where we can use machine learning and deep learning so so that we can come up with a new algorithm so as uh, uh, here this is the uh, example and uh, uh, this may uh, here, here we are we are having a large amount of data sets for cats and uh, dogs uh, classification so this is improving day by day and still there are uh, many algorithms and many research papers are uh, published day to day so the, this where this is where we will be classifying the dogs and the cats and using the properties using the properties of a dog and as well as the cat so here the properties here the value here the data of the dog and cat is acting as a future part future value through which we are going to classify whether the image is of a dog or it's a cat so here the future uh, plays a very important role either it might be the color it might be the shape of the ears so we can able to easily say that the shape of the cat is uh, somewhat different from uh, a dog's uh, ear shape and even though some dogs uh, uh, resemble the shape of the cat uh, 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 ears that is the ear shape but the face shape uh, when it comes to the structure of the face it will be completely different from the cat's face so using these uh, using these uh, properties and the tail properties uh, and the fur so all these properties the size of the cat and dog so all is and we also we, uh, need to be uh, saying that some dogs will be of shape uh, small shape uh, i mean compared to even compared to the cat at that time we need to go for the other features like uh, colors and uh, the shape of the leg tail so uh, all these things 
so these things these things uh, these information these data will be uh, stored in the um uh, 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 there are certain uh, variables uh, are it will be used for training the model so once we train the model we will be giving the testing uh, images to test whether the our images of cat or dog so from that we can able to predict whether the uh, input image which we give which we will will be giving to the application whether it is of a cat or a dog so here this is a object detection and here it also uses a localization object so here we can able to easily see that um, we can we are uh, detecting a laptop or uh, whether it is a bottle bowl or a cup so whether uh, it's a handbag it it here we uh, what uh, uh, what we uh, we need to say that it is already there are so many models which is already trained so for example keras and tensor so is giving us a pre trained models which uh, which is which is having uh, thousands of classes and which are trained with uh, lakhs of uh, images uh, uh, for example image net so google is uh, google is uh, uh, training this uh, image net with a uh, lakhs and lakhs of images and thousands of classes where it can where the models where the models can be trained with this uh, uh, data set this image data set to come up with the uh, uh, detection of object in the image so uh i will uh, give a short uh, um, introduction about the machine learning algorithm once uh, i have given an introduction and uh, i would like to talk about certain uh, uh, information about cnn and vgg uh, 16 so and i would like to point out some difference in the vgg 19 once i done that i would like to show you um, uh, a demo uh, a small demo uh, uh, how we would we can able to predict uh, the image uh, what kind of image or in, uh, in which class it class is falls in which group it falls um, by using just a six or seven line code where i will be using a pre trained model so uh, and uh, using a this pre trained the vgg16 convolution uh, cnn model so i i will be showing you the uh, how we can able to uh, uh, classify the image which i am going to give you as an input i am going to predict um, that image so what type of image is that and uh, i am going uh, uh, i will be showing you a platform uh, and uh, uh, we all know that uh, to um, um, execute a machine learning uh, code or a deep learning code we need a, a huge amount of uh, gpu um this system a huge amount of resources and huge amount of processing time and to uh, here google is uh, uh, giving us a platform uh, so peter is giving us a platform through which we can able to execute our code in the online cloud uh, platform so we can able to use that resource which is available in online and that is also aws which is a, a kind of a costly so here i will be showing you that and also i will show you um as that how we can uh, uh, i will uh, i will show you how we can able to create our own layers uh, our own uh, models our uh, we can able to even train our own models uh, so we will see that one and uh, so uh, machine learning we should have uh, uh, heard uh, much about machine learning and deep learning in this uh, um, uh, previous session so i would like to shorten this thing uh, a machine learning is where uh, we learn from past experience or the uh, we learn from the data which is available to us and so for example a good example is weather prediction so we uh, depending on the um, season depending on the month and depending on the temperatures and depending upon the uh, 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 we, uh, the direction the uh, uh, wind is blowing so from the sea so the we will be we will be predicting the rain and we will be predicting the temperature and depending on the error so we for example if it is uh, it is a predictor as it's a rain a rainy day but it's not raining or it's a, uh, it's kind of a sunny uh, scenario um, we will we will be updating our algorithm so that the, the whatever the error we have come up with will be correct so this is how a machine learning work so we train and uh, we uh, predict on information if the and with the help of the errors calculated between the predicted information and the 
correct answer we will be again training the algorithm so this is like a uh, this is like you will be going in a full cycle um, uh, we will be going through um, repeatedly recursively we will uh, update our algorithm till uh, we uh, uh, we uh, 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 have an algorithm which predicts uh, somewhat accurate information so uh, also it is uh, we don't want to overfit it or uh, we don't want to underfit the, our algorithm it's better to have uh, 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 information which is predicted uh, in a certain way so uh, uh, and also here we need to use the task so uh, how difficult it will be uh, uh, for uh, the human being to be uh, uh, tackling that particular task uh, using a program so uh, we, uh, we tend to know that by using if else statement we can able to write the simple machine learning program but and there are certain uh, tasks which is which cannot be uh, carried out with a just an if else statement so we need to train this model we need to test the model we need to calculate the uh, error values so then we need to come up with a uh, uh, updated algorithm so so uh, all these things we need to uh, do recursively and we need to come up with a, a, a good uh, predictable model so here the machine learning the system which holds the machine learning will learn from the example so whatever the example we give so example here is the future uh, as i previously pointed out uh, for example if we give an image with a dog and cat these features these are ears and colors and the patterns of the skin and the fur and the size of the dog or a cat will be used to um, uh, uh, learn from the image so that we predict when we give an, an image as an input okay so this is a repeated process so which will we will be using the data which is available in our hand so in machine learning there are two types that is supervised learning and unsupervised learning so supervised learning is like a, a like a um, having a, a teacher who uh, uh, who is a, uh, having a look into the, what the uh, students are doing so unsupervised learning are students who um, try to tend to learn from their own so here the supervised learning we know what input we are going to do and we know what output we are going to get so for example i simply put a super supervised learning is going to learn from the label data so already we know what kind of data we are going to train so we know uh, what data we are going to uh, give uh, inside to train and test and with that the model will be uh, trained so that it has its own labels Uh, to which the particular images which we will be giving as an input will be uh, predicted so unsupervised we are uh, uh, we are not going to give any label information we are it's going to learn from the whatever the information we are going to give and we going to predict from that particular information so in supervised learning we are going to have classification model and regression model and on supervised learning clustering model so these are the uh, uh, certain uh, examples i would like to point out in the classification so it's a kind of a discrete value so it predicts a discrete value so uh, when uh, i am having a group of uh, or a class of uh, information for example it might be a uh, pot it might be a glass it might be a, a mug it might be a dog cat so i need to classify the particular image so at that time i will be going for this particular model so hand written recognition so this is also your somewhat a, our important uh, application right now where it is uh, um, research and also uh, there are certain uh, applications or uh, products which are coming up with uh, the in for finding the forger cases so hand writing algorithm recognition which is where we will be storing a particular hand written information already and we will be training those uh, training our models with these hand written uh, hand written uh, um, information and from that we will be classifying whether the input information is of a particular person or not so this this information will be helpful in finding the theft or uh, other uh, important information so then regression actually regression is of a continuous data 
uh, in this uh, continuous data this uh, this model we will be using uh, when we are predicting the temperature or all price or uh, it is varying the, the the data which is not uh, in a discrete form so that uh, for example uh, in computer vision when the regression will be used is that when i need to find the force estimation either it might be the full body or it might be the head so when at that time we will be going for regression so because the force estimation it might be of a, in degrees or in a, uh, with respect to the coordinates so with the help of regression we can able to find the head force uh, uh, um, uh, information and also with the stochastic uh, we can able to find the uh, human uh, pose or uh, other estimation so when we are going to find this pose estimation we can go for the regression so then uh, clustering so clustering um, it is used to uh, differentiate it is used to uh, differentiate group of data into uh, n number of groups for example i have a, um, a cluster of data uh, which is uh, of a bird species or a, a dog species i need to find that my uh, algorithm the model which i have looked on should find which bird is falling under which species or which animal which dog is falling under a which species so which type so if we this machine learning or deep learning uh, this uh, what the whenever we are going to work with the data a data has a pattern okay so for example uh, i can easily have a pattern like this monday uh, uh, i will be Uh, having a particular class at a particular time it's a pattern so every day every monday i will be going for that particular class every tuesday i will be having either the class in the morning or in the evening so i will be going to that class it's a pattern so this pattern will be continuing for a certain one semester so this is a pattern uh, which will be um, which we, which we will be finding in the uh, data so which need, we need to find in the data to create a good model which predicts the information so here pattern we will be finding either using colors or either using the features as i said earlier so a different dog uh, for example a dog if it, if we take a, a dog or a bird for example if i take a parrot it has a certain properties a certain properties a unique properties when compared to a crow so and also uh, uh, hence so these properties will be taken as a data the features from the image so these features will be either taken from uh, by using uh, edge deduction or feature point deduction or a contour um, or a, a pattern recognition model so uh, by using these features we will be able um differentiating these uh, a particular animal into one group or a particular animal to another group so um image segmentation is a very good example for example if i need to segment one part of an image from another part for example i need to differentiate a crowd in a building so i can able to easily segment those thing information the uh, crowd from the building so by using this cluster uh, a model so this is one example for clustering and this clustering also used in road, road lane deduction or uh, axon zone deduction so uh, in those particular applications and convolution neural network this is a, one of the famous uh, uh, neural network uh, um, technique uh, algorithm deep learning algorithm which is used um, Uh, currently in computer vision with the respect to machine learning to uh, uh, find uh, what kind of image is or what object the image having or uh, uh, even to say face recognition even though face recognition is as in a um, kind of a right now using deep learning as being uh, uh, kind of a um uh, prohibited from in some area because of a certain other difficulty certain other uh, security purposes uh, so this uh, the, this uh, face recognition has been studied uh, for decades using deep learning and machine learning and 
still there are uh, many uh, researchers who are carrying out this uh, um, research and coming up with a new algorithm uh, for uh, by using uh, 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 variations that is a uh, uh, translation or post variation or elimination variation in the images and keeping this as an augmented data or a feature uh, information uh, into the model so here in the uh, cnn model uh, we will be having a weights and biases uh, for the objects of various objects and uh, we will be differentiating one uh, yeah, information from the another by using the pattern which is available in the image so by using this cnn we can be able to easily uh, filter out the features in the image so and by and uh, directly learning from the data which is available in the image we can able to easily classify the what kind of image it is falling under so it might be falling under the dog it might be falling under the cat so we will be using the information which is available in the uh, image so these data these data which is available will be fetched using this convolution layer so by using this convolution layer we will be estimating the features we will be extracting the features from the features we will be uh, detecting what kind of features uh, uh, will be helpful for uh, uh, detecting a particular class uh, from these uh, learned features we will be training the model training the algorithm so that it predicts the information accurately so by using these features only we can able to create a model we can able to design a model so that it will be uh, robust we are reliable so uh, it is very difficult to uh, design a model with 100% accuracy and uh, and uh, even if we, if it is very uh, 100% uh, for the example we are testing the data we are training and we are testing the uh, model with 100% accuracy but then there is a, there might be a scenario when when uh, we tend to give an input uh, which is uh, having no connection at all with the trained data and the tested data we will be uh, we will be getting uh, information we will be getting a prediction value which is not at all supposed to be happen so at that time it we will have a difficulties so it's better to have a training uh, uh, training model so that that i uh, trains as much as possible as much as time as possible uh, yes it uh, yeah, the training uh, takes a uh, hectic amount of time uh, the training takes a large amount of resources when it comes to cpu or gpu and process time depending on the resources of a cpu or gpu uh, even in gpu when it comes to gpu because when they are using a convolution that is a matrix that is a pixel values to fetch the feature feature values um, with a filter so it still it takes certain amount of time to process this information so once we process once we created the model once we saved that model for a future prediction it is very easy so and also we need to be very careful that when when, when we are predicting whether that information which we are going to predict is having in relationship with which we have trained so which we have labeled so all these informations we need to take up so this is a, a simple uh, uh, layout of a, a cnn uh, layer so uh, it has a input layer and a hidden layer and a output layer so uh, the images will be given in the input layer and the, and the processing will be ha happening in the hidden layer and the, in the output layer it will be giving us the predicted information that is the class it, which under which it is getting for uh, under so uh, here uh, the most uh, uh, common uh, layers in uh, convolution uh, uh, neural network is the convolution layer uh, uh, lu layer and pool so uh, rlu layer is activation function which is used to in process of a convolution of the image so here when it comes to a convolution layer and uh, when when the image is through this convolution layer it is a kind of a filter it is a convolution filter which filters each and every features in the image and it will be initiated for the feature purpose and each filter will extract certain information certain feature certain unique information in the image it might be of age 
it might be of a um, feature point so it might be of a contour information it might be of a pattern it might be of a segmented information in an image it may be of a color it may be of a histogram information gaussian information a blur information so it it may be even of a short form the image which is extracted from the images which we have been given in the as an input in the input layer so this convolution layer we 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 can uh, we can trial with this convolution layer if we can trial with this filter what kind of features we need to uh, extract from the images so by using our own feature points for example uh, uh, when i worked in uh, detecting uh, uh, fish under water so uh, it is very difficult for us to detect the information because it is under the water there is a limited amount of illumination and so many noise because of the water and so we need to go with the pre processing and also we need to fetch the features which is uh kind of a, we use a mask so that we filter out this fish and we need to fetch the features from the fish the uh, fish color so um, th this is these are the difficulties this uh, these filters these features uh, will vary from one image to the another image for example dark cat it has certain features which will be uh, looking into uh, and uh, when we comes to uh, uh, for example i need to detect the laptop so i need to detect a particular laptop a old and age laptop to the new age laptop these laptops are certain features so and building these are these buildings have corners so and other structure information which will be missed in fish and other uh, organic information so flowers color is a very good feature in a flower so we need to uh, understand we need to analyze the images before we pick a filter and by using this filters will be extracting the features and these feature will be helpful in training the model so once we train this model the same features the same features will be uh, used for detecting or predicting the what kind of information what kind of image we have been given so this is a example this is an example of a, a cnn uh, model so first the image will be given as an input then it will be passed to the convolution layer which has a activation uh, function then the pooling will be carried out again depending on how many convolution layers we have so this is depends on our uh, 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 our uh, 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 personal interest and how well we are going to use this filter to predict the information that is to train the model so that we predict the information of the particular uh, image so that's what i told you for example uh, if i need to use a multi spectral image so multi spectral image have a uh, n number of spectral information so i need to have a model so that my model trains from the spectral information so spectral information is completely different from color information or a gray scale information so there are the information have certain properties which this color information doesn't have so in that way i need to create a model create a uh, layers which is helpful in training those particular application so then once our convolution layers are uh, at the future we learned uh, futures we will be going for the classification of this image okay. so we need to pattern that then we need to use a fully connected layer to predict the information with the help of softmax we will be predicting the class so which will be of the um, uh predicted in so which will be giving us an output in a prediction uh, value so so one uh, here here we will uh, see uh, each and every uh, uh, layer so uh, as i said previously once the features are detected in the information we will be going for the classification in the classification process we will be having a fully connected layer that is The, uh, that is which gives us an output that is of vector is of any dimension so that is dimension will be proportionality equal to how many number of classes uh, we have trained with we have we are, uh, the classes which we have labeled with so so that we will be it will be helpful in predicting the information which we have given so this vector contains the probability so we have uh, we have given the information we have given the information is an image so by using the feature 
by using the features information the data which is collected from the features of the image i from all this convolution lay so these informations will be uh, given inside the fully connected layer from that that probability the probability value for each and every class a class might have a zero probability a class might have a 20% probability of a, of a which image might be falling under that class a class might have a image might have a 90% probability where that image might be falling on that that particular class these things these things will be uh, uh, retrieved by using a fully connected layer so this are uh, this this uh, cnn layer will be using a softmax to classify this output. so we need to use this. we will be using the softmax as our last layer so that we will be uh, uh, detecting the what output what image and what uh, under which that image is falling under, under which the class under which group for example i have given a uh, dog as an input uh, image so the features will be collected the features will be collected in this feature learning in this convolution layer and once the features are collected so this dog image will be classified either as a dog or as a cat for example here car track van bicycle so when i if i have given as a car as an image so these things will be collecting the information depending on the size on all these things and from these the layers we will be getting the probabilities for each and every image so and using the softmax we will be classifying the output so these are certain features we we can use it's up to uh, it literally up to us it's uh, uh, this is how where we will be deciding what kind of features will be uh, we will be using uh, when we analyze the image so we will be looking inside the image for example i am looking in uh, dog image or a cat image i will be looking into that so okay what are the features i can get from that image so i need to analyze from that and decide decide from those information for example if there is a building i need to classify i can e easily see that there are there will be a structural information edges corners from that i can able to uh, detect future points future information unique information and also we need to be certain that when we are looking into an image when we are seeing an image when we are analyzing an image we need to be very careful the data the features plays a very important role when it comes to prediction and these features will be should be unique this features should be of unique properties when compared to the other for example a horse a zebra we can easily differentiate these two in animals so the features the features which is uh, available in the horse will be not available in the uh, zebra zebra the features which is available in the zebra will not be available in the horse so here the pattern the pattern plays a very important role so the feature here i will i will surely i will go with the features of pattern so that is how uh, that is how we uh, you should analyze the image we just blank we don't want to have any technical uh, mathematical model or we need, don't want to uh uh go go inside any pre um information analysis we just look into the image okay what kind of uh, features we need to deduct from this image either there is a it just can be deducted even we can able to trial we can able to trial with the image processing techniques i will have an image i will i will uh, use an edge deduction or a uh, uh so future deduction uh i uh, skip so uh, uh gaussian information histogram information pattern information i will detect all these information and i will see what kind of information can uh, be used to train the model by using which kind of information my model can predict the information accurately so all these things can be seen all these things can be learned so when it comes to uh, one important point i like to point out is that machine learning and deep learning has been uh, from 1980s so right now because of the rise in the hardware the rise in the technology we are ten still we are behind uh, for example india is behind uh, india in india we still we need a much hardware uh, uh, facilities to uh, train these models uh, and uh, to detect test this model to detect or predict this information 
so uh, there are some such uh, amazon is giving uh, aws cloud uh, and uh, google is giving distributed uh, cloud uh, and so this thing this information even yesterday uh, um, nvidia has released a new gpu uh, rtx 3 uh, 3000 um, series so uh, so these these uh, these uh, hardware plays a very important role so here um we need to trial and see all these features well, we if some uh, features we have used and we are not uh, having a certain uh, accuracy we shift to other feature by this a kind of a trial and error method we need to uh, use so machine learning itself a trial and uh, error it's uh, it predicts and it uh, corrects itself from the error it predicts corrects itself from the error it's a, like a, a, a cycle so what well, the same thing we need to uh, do ourselves as a human so that we find a correct features from a, a particular information particular image so our next trial uh, this this trial we will be using with uh, uh, max so this trial uh, uh, plays a uh, um, whenever we if we give a uh, one it will shift from one to another pixel so if we give two So we will move for uh, for two pixels at a particular uh, uh, look. So these guys are used to uh, shift the matrix from one space to another, and how much shift it should have. So it uh, might be one, it might be two, or it might be three. Or it, it it depends on our uh, our uh, uh, criteria, and depending on this guys, the speed, the process time will increase or decrease. Okay, so because when we give a limited uh, size, it will go and fetch all the information in the image. When we go for a maximum size, it will miss out the uh, information. The accuracy gets uh, less, so but the time gets uh, uh, decreased. So it's like a balance act. If when we need uh, accuracy, we need uh, we will be uh, we need to sacrifice the uh, cost of time. So when we need a uh, uh, quick uh, prediction. uh quick training uh, need to be done uh, so we need um, this accuracy need to be uh, uh sacrifice so this is like a balance act so this uh, these things these is such small uh, things plays a very important role and, and this rectified linear unit which is a, which makes a very, uh, the layers very uh, more effective which is a kind of activation function and uh, it acts as a um, Uh, acting the layer either we need to carry forward with into the next layer or we don't want to uh, carry forward so this um, uh, by mapping it to zero we will be telling the layer to either to uh, activate the feature or not to uh, activate this feature by using this uh, rectified linear unit we can able to do that so this is a mathematical uh, uh, function which uh, is used uh, for a uh, relu functions so here uh, in this uh, um uh, if the input value is greater than 0 then that particular neuron here neuron is a uh, um which is will be uh, having the layer so is fire so or is if it is not it's not going to be fire so these things these things can we can able to control um control uh, uh, uh in the hidden layers uh, the neurons which we by using the uh the Really function. So, and then comes the uh, pooling. So here the pooling uh, are used to down sample the in uh, information uh, and for dimensionality reduction so that uh, uh, the speed is increased and uh, the learning process uh, is decreased. So when it comes to pooling, we can able to do that. So it also simplifies the output which we get from the layer. So. this fully connected layer so the fully connected layer uh, uh, is used to predict the uh, image under which it is going to get uh, uh, go inside so it will flatten the information which we get from the previous layer it either convert it into 3d or 2d or even a 1d layer from that 1d layer from that vector uh, or array of information so, so when it, it is in 2d it will be an array even it is in 1d it will be a vector so we will be getting the probability so so by using this probability by using this probability we will be uh, finding under which uh, layer it is going to fall under so this 
So by using soft charge and this is the equation, uh, um, we will be uh, uh, getting this property. And by using this, we will be uh, finding under which class, class is going to fall under. So VGG is 16. It's a convolution layer. It's a proposed and Andrews has done in 2014. So this, uh, what happened because of this VGG net, it reduced the parameter, hyperparameter, which is used in convolution layers, and improved the training time. So by improving, actually, this VGG 16 or VGG 19 is predominantly used in classification and uh, uh, classification of images uh, applications. So still, uh, the, uh, there are updated versions or uh, uh, customized versions of VGG 16 and VGG 19 papers or research papers and research papers are published in even today. So this has been uh, thoroughly researched and many uh, classification algorithm or object direction algorithm following this VGG 16 or VGG 19 algorithm. So this is a structure. You can see that uh, in VGG 16 there will be 16 convolution layer with a um, fully connected layer and also in VGG 19 we will be having 19 uh, convolution with a fully connected layer. So at last of math. So between the four polling uh, layers will be there. So this is a uh, uh, rough uh, uh, layers which, uh, which is used uh, 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 in uh, configuring the uh, or VGC 19 model. So uh, right now, what I will uh, I will uh, showcase you uh, a simple uh, a program, simple program how to uh, run VGC uh, uh, 16, which is pre trained, uh, which is already available. The model is already available. Okay, so same with VGG90. So, so the online platform which we can use and uh, for uh, experimenting with our uh, uh, algorithm is that we can go with the Google Cola and this has a GPU and the GPU as well. CPU is still in a testing process, uh, but still many people have started users using this GPU and uh, Jupyter Notebook. So both these two things are notebook uh, platform. Uh, it's in an environment which is of a notebook, which is a very user friendly. Uh, it which uh, as, yeah the, the speed is limited because it's uh, using a cloud and also the speed depends on the how much uh, net bandwidth we are using. So that also depends on that. So right now I will show you a small program. Uh, I will show you, I will showcase you uh, how we can execute uh, uh, and, uh, uh, a machine learning program. So, so that it's a, it's a very easy, we can able to easily learn from the um, uh, documents which they are given, the Keras TensorFlow. Uh, and TensorFlow is kind of a, um, even in-depth uh, um, library which we, will, we, we are getting for our deep learning. So this Google Code app and Jupyter Notebook it's pre-installed with this chaos and then so also we can able to downgrade uh, the version for which we need it. So right now I will show you certain uh, basic uh, things which we can uh, use for uh, running the program. So on, uh, uh, if MATLAB, uh, if uh, MATLAB is there, uh, so for example, uh, certain uh, institutions are um, having a MATLAB. So right now, MATLAB supports uh, from the previous two versions, so uh, 2000, I, uh, um, uh, before two versions, they started uh, supporting um, the deep learning machine learning. So this, uh, this MATLAB has a very powerful tool, so from which we can able to classify or we can able to use a regression model, even structuring models. So on many uh, uh, computer vision algorithms or uh, applications have been developed with this MATLAB. So uh, this, uh, this one uh, application we can able to, uh, platform which we can able to use uh, for our uh, uh, research experiments, um, which we can be able to carry out. So, and data, uh, I like to point out the uh, uh, website Kaggle.com, uh, which has a very good uh, uh, data set uh, um, and uh, so many other uh, websites, so many other institutions, MIT, uh, 
Cambridge uh, uh, Ming in the universities are uh, uh, giving open source data sets for uh, de deep learning and machine learning. So Keras, TensorFlow, or the Python uh, language uh, libraries, which we can use to model our uh, layers. That is a model of a machine learning or a deep learning uh, model. So, so right now I will jump into uh, uh, my browser so that I will share the how we can execute the code. Okay. The name of So um, I hope you guys are seeing my web browser. So, so this is a drive. Uh, this is my drive, and uh, uh, I hope you right now you guys are clear, seeing clearly. So this is my drive. Uh, already I'm having a uh, three notepad uh, notebook uh, file. So when uh, if uh, people want to see where, most probably everyone, every one of us knows about this. And I would like to show you that by which, uh, by through which uh, mode we can go inside. This is a, so we need to go inside this one. And once we have gone inside, we will be getting into this area, this workspace. So I have created a folder CNN. So I am having two uh, images here. I have just downloaded from uh, all free photo website. So. Um, these two images, I'm going to predict what kind of images, what kind of uh, uh, what kind of image it is classified as, which is already which uh, from which the model is already pre uh, pre uh, trained. So it is trained with thousands lakhs of images, thousands of classes are there. Okay, I'm going to use Keras. So and uh, so I'm inside a folder. I have created a folder. I am inside this folder. So what I need to do is we need to activate. Google Collaborator. So once we have activated, uh, you guys can see that I have clicked right click, more, and just showing you uh, Google Collaborator. So this Google Collaborator is the notebook in which we are going to type our Python code. So right now, I, if I click this one, a new tab will be opened. So uh, uh, already I have opened, I have uh, given my drive so this is uh, something like we are changing drive for example in our linux we'll be changing drive uh, to a particular path where our files are there so this is that path so this is a code for that so i have already connected my uh, gmail into the collaborator so what happens is that it needs a permission from us so when i, I would like to uh, show you this from google.colab import drive so because we are going to use the images in the drive, we need to give this one. So it is like we are giving the permission to the cloud platform that we need to use this information. Yeah. So this is the uh, first line. And then drive.mount. Drive.mount is a function which is available inside drive. And I am going to give the path. So this is constant. This is constant for everyone. So if I run this, see. This is the file which will be created. This will be very blank, actually. So I will show you when. Uh, so this is the this is the workspace I will uh, get. Okay. So this is the workspace I will get. And we can able to add the code by clicking this one. This is the platform where I will be writing my code. And we can able to add text. purpose, which will make us understand about that code, that line of code. So this is the platform which we are in which we are going to type and which we are going to execute our code. So here, 
when i go to this run time see, please you can see that i go i'm going inside the run time and i'm going to change run time type here you can see that hardware accelerator yeah so you can see that none cpu 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 is the one which i told you about is a new thing um uh, which is uh, designed by uh, google with collaborate with others uh, and um, uh it is a very powerful uh, hardware accelerator uh, and gpu i know we will go with the gpu so whatever we are going to we are not going to train we are just going to predict which is uh, the model is already trained by kera we are going to use that kera model so that we are going to predict what kind of information i'm going to give in yeah so i'm going to select gpu and i'm going to save so the information is saved yeah so i will come here so it's i have already saved this one so when i click run this is a button i have typed this code i have i'm going to run this uh, um code it will ask for authentication so this is uh, this is like uh, to use the drive so i will be clicking here it will be going for the new uh, window so i will be going with the gmail which to which i need to give the Uh, permission so i will give hello to give the permission for that so i have already uh, uh, have uh, given the access So I am just going to copy that code. It will, you will be seeing a code actually. Uh, I am going to enter this one. I will just press the enter. Not noticed during manual check of printout. So now you can see that it is it is bent inside. We have we have we have given the permission to the code app. so that we are going to use the whatever image i am going to have whatever the code we i am going to have in my drive yeah but there is a catch here ls i hope everyone knows ls list the directory the you know, in the files which is having and the, the current directory you can see that it is in the home yeah this is a point at the front of that uh, uh, what a uh, um, whatever i am going to uh, at what uh, Uh, environment i am having so what i am going to do is cd space g drive because so i went inside so now again i am going to check what all the folders i will be having my drive yeah so now i am i am going to create a new uh, one two and uh, code in from code uh, layer so now i am going to cd my so please be careful with the text my drive i went inside my drive again i'm going to list what are all the folders i'm going to have you can see that what are all the folders i'm having here so now i'm going to go inside cn yeah so again i'm going to go with the layer cd space capital cn so because we are going to work with the folder so please be careful with the case sensitive so now i went inside the folder which i am having the images on the file so now i'm going to list again the file that i am having then so this is the file so now what i am going to do is i am going to import the information the files uh, so that uh, uh, the libraries the uh, methods all the all the things which i am going to import so that we going to predict what kind of image we are going to uh, give us an input and what kind of class is going to throw us yeah so again i am going to click code so first from kera dot pre processing so sometimes you can get the snippets i'm just going to give enter dot image so import load underscore image yeah so i i will check with whether this is coming yes it's run see here the number is shown so it is it, it have uh, executed without any error so again now i continue with the other functions 
pre-processing dot image again import i'm going to import a method from that so right now i'm going to import img underscore two underscore array so this this method is to convert the image into an array yeah so now i know i'm going to give enter i didn't execute this line so from i'm going to uh, type all the functions uh, from keras dot again i'm going to use the keras okay so now i'm going to use application yeah so dot now i'm going to give see these are the models which is already available so you can see that i just given dot i didn't type anything you guys can see uh, see that so these are the already trained models which is available with the kera yeah i am going to give pg16 now once we complete we will go with pg19 so pg16 import so this vgg16 is having so many uh, functions and methods so now i am going to do is pre processing underscore import yeah so once you guys are thorough with the, whatever the uh, code uh, we can able to easily uh, see that what are all the properties what are all the functions what are all the um, uh, uh uh methods we need to hold now i have a, a given decode predictions we are using which we are going to predict yeah so and then from keras dot application dot again which is g16 now i'm going to import the model vgg sorry vg yeah i'm going to import the model so i am going to execute this code yeah so now see right now i am going to load the model model equal to vgg16 so i have imported that now i am going to run the method it will take some time it's downloading so you can clearly see that it is downloading it will be end with ending with h5 so please make sure that it is ending with dot h5 yeah so even when you are creating your own model you need to save it with dot h5 fine okay so you can see the path from which it is downloading tensorflow kesar application vg16 okay so you can uh, even use this path to download uh, ourselves we can able to store that in our directory okay we can run that file yeah we can run in our system actually okay now i have um downloaded the model yeah now i am going to import the image which i am going to have in my drive so this is the image so i will get the file name happy coffee here so this is the image uh, file i'm going to use of with So img equal to load underscore image. So there are some properties we need to give. First one is the path, so and it is ending with the pg. So please be careful. We need to give the image as uh, image, and if it, this image is uh, inside a path, for example, I have a folder img, and inside this I am having this image. You need to give img slash this image. Yeah. so i hope you guys can uh, uh, most probably everyone knows this one so uh, this image and then target size so i will be giving to uh, 40 cross 240 so it's up to you uh, if if it's up to us so i'm going to execute to see whether there is any error yeah executed so no error again a code line so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to convert so first i will uh, try to display this image or what we will do is display of so we have displayed yes our image is loaded correctly yeah now what we am going to do is i'm going to convert my image so that it will be processed by the model yeah so i'm going to convert this image pixel into a numpy array numpy is also a python library 
uh, which is a predefined library. So image underscore data equal to, it's a variable name, any name you can give for that. So img int underscore two underscore c data array, that is array I'm going to convert. So now I need to give the image I have loaded. The image I have loaded is inside img file name, that is a variable. So I have given that one. Yeah, right now I'm going to execute that img to array. And then again, uh, next line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reshape the image array, the image array. See, now I will display that. Previously I displayed that variable, it was an image. Now if I display this image underscore data, you can see that it's kind of a data, it's kind of a value. Yeah, it's an array. Okay, now we will reshape this image. Yeah, now I will have a image variable. So I am image underscore data dot reshape. So one comma image dot shape. So this is a kind of a um, uh, configuration which we will use to, to make the image shape such a way that it will be accepted by um, the model. So here we need to give a dot shape. Okay, so now I'm going to execute whether I, I'm going to check whether there is any error is there. So I have given the three, which is not available. So that's why it's a, and that's why it's giving an error. So now it is executed. So then, now what we're going to do is we're going to pre-process so that uh, the image which we are having is ready to import into the Yeah, we'll execute and see whether there is any error. So executor. Okay, so now we're going to predict what kind of image, what kind of image it is. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a data. So predict underscore info equal to, it's a variable name, what uh, we can give. So I have a model, right? I have in, imported this model in model variable. So model dot predict. So I am going to give the my preprocessed image. So I will just check whether this. So it will take some time. So it has its image. So two twenty four cos two twenty four cos three. So uh, it's advisable to go with that size. So now we will check what label it is falling under. So. We're going to decode that predicted information. Info. Will take some time. So now, I am going to get the class. Name equal to label So it will be in a vector or arrays information so that's why we need to convert that one. So I have got that information. So 
so now i am going to display the image so img that is the first image and i am going to get the name one so i am going to get what name it is so name so i will have this as a string and concatenate this one so again again i will concatenate with another so prediction probability yeah so now i am going to go with the second value and i will multiply with with the 100 so that i will get the information okay so now i will try to run this one so i need to convert this into string see the cup with the prediction of 70 percentage yeah we can improve this one depending on our model okay so if i give if i need to give vgg 90 so i just give from kera dot application dot vgg 90 import vgg 90 okay so this will get my uh, i will execute separately this will get my vgg 19 model so model 19 equal to v so vgg 19 and i need to close it with parenthesis so i'm going to download it and started downloading again you can see that it is ending with dot h5 it's downloaded so i am having an image but i need to predict yeah i need to predict this so here i am predicted with the model predict info i will give a different variable model 19 dot predict same thing model 19 dot predict image underscore way so i will execute this one i will see whether it is again and the same thing so we please will change this size Uh, we can rectify this by giving the size to 24 years okay so this is uh, executed now i need to see what kind of label it is label 1 i will give another name label 1 is called c code underscore predictions of c p r e d i info it will get the uh, label information now i got the label information so now again i will see uh, label 1 and i will fetch the info which is available inside that vector yeah it's done now i will show again cup with the 90 percent so because it's uh, using a um, uh, extra convolution layer the prediction level is high okay so this is how we execute the program so we can able to create our own model so when we are creating our own model we need to create uh, include sequential um, um, layer we need to include convolution layer in the convolution layer we need to specify how much size we are going to give what type of filter we are going to use uh, max pool layer so all these things we need to hard code now we are having a predefined model that is vgg 16 vgg 90 So even some other mobile model, mobile net model is the so other uh, models which is predefined in the Kera. Okay, so this is how we can able to execute our code um, without uh, resources. It will take time. When we are training, it will take time. It will uh, depending on the echoes, which will take time. So um, it, uh, still, uh, uh, it takes time. But this is this is a uh, when we are not having the resources which needed so for practicing, deep learning, and machine learning. this will help in passing very in a lot of ways okay so this you can see that how much uh, uh, information the active session used actually okay 3.32 gb actually the gb gpu used 6.71 gb so okay, it is in the gb not in the mb so that's why it, it takes so much time okay so uh, with this i would like to uh, end the session
and so these are the references uh, books uh, i have uh, looked into the matlab math words uh, the uh, images i have taken from and thank you and thank you for giving me this opportunity um thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you thank sir you. uh thank you for the informative session mm -hmm. sir yeah, especially the demo session yeah yes questions any questions from the audience uh, from the participants hello hello sir uh, will yes. the python notebook be shared yeah i'm sure ma'am i will share uh, i will share with the delegates uh, they will share with you ma'am uh, i will share thank you so much sir yes, the participants nice. uh, will be po uh, will be posting the ppt in the google classroom you can refer the google classroom for all the ppts so after the session is over after a day we'll be posting the ppts and the recordings also will share you the link so that uh, through the link you can view the recordings also uh, ma'am do post Any the python questions? links also when sir gives uh, whatever the whatever the materials uh, the, the resource persons gives us that will be posting it thank you ma'am okay any any questions from the participants you have any questions you can put it in the chat or you can ask hello directly. hello hello yeah yes hello sir, sir. hello hello sir yes sir, uh, sir uh, can, can, can you can you share that uh, coding part also yes sir sure i am going to share the notebook notebook you just import it into your drive yeah okay sir it will it will run okay. it will run. whatever the output it is shown in that particular notebook it will be viewed yeah. by you all then once you are oh open. fine fine by uh, okay by thank you thank you sharing the code with the delegates uh, the people who have organized it, they will share with you sir okay uh, fine fine thank you thank you excuse thank me you. sir yes sir yes sir uh, sir if i want to train this model on my data uh, so yeah. what what shall i do for that Uh, sir actually if you are going to train your data we need to uh, uh, either you need to check whether you are going to create your own model your own mm -hmm. uh, con convolution layers mm -hmm. yeah because mm -hmm. your convolution layers will be different from the what uh, already available layers. yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you can summarize the uh, model uh, mm -hmm. by giving a method called summary so mm -hmm. you can check the already available vbgg 16 and vbgg 19 model okay okay yeah. once you have created your own model you are at the dot h by file you can mm -hmm. uh, train that model with mm -hmm. the data set you going to have mm -hmm. there are a lot of data sets available sir um, yeah, yes. yeah mm -hmm. so uh, we can, we are already uh, uh, very fortunate to have uh, so many data uh, which is yes. available available so uh, we we can able to give, uh, get the, the information uh, and we can uh, store in our that is we need to extract the information in our drive yeah so then once we given the path uh, the, uh, there is a image uh, generator there is a function for that once mm -hmm. we have given we will also automatically to train for our model sir. depending sir, on our model the prediction information will be given sir when i am training this in google collab it is taking a lot of time though it is yes, saying sir. that it has a gpu yeah uh, yeah sir yes, yeah. yes sir so thing is uh, right now many people have started using this one Mm -hmm. so my uh, uh, what we can do is that we can train this model by night or something or in a holiday okay so uh, okay. after one day or two because uh, depending on our culture size mm -hmm. uh, course will take time sir so last can, question sir uh, is there any uh, other platform is available for uh, gpu apart from google collab which is free um uh, Uh, so which is free in the sense jupiter is available mm -hmm. so uh, uh, jupiter is right now available uh, um, which is also used by many researchers mm -hmm. so you can try this one but aws is a kind of a proxy okay. so uh, yes sir yeah uh, uh, with uh, so uh, uh, we need to pay certain uh, uh, subscription amount to use that so right now free is these two things you can you can uh, easily use so this thank you, add, yeah thank you sir. thank you thank you
Yes, sir. Can you share the link? So Any more questions from the audience? Uh, uh, yeah, ma'am. Uh, three. Any ma'am? Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Sir, how to create our own model? I have yeah, a different. For that, data, I want to create my own model. Can you give any references for that, sir? Yeah, I will. I will share you the reference, ma'am. Uh, I will. I will share you a, a, a very simple uh, tutorial for that. Uh, I will share you the link as well. Um, the thing is, you need to create a model. Uh, for example, you have seen the structure of VGG 16 and VGG 19, right? The configuration architecture. First, uh, it starts with the uh, input layer. Then comes the convolution layer. In the convolution layer, will be giving the size. All these things will be hard coded by us now. Yes, sir. So, for example, there is 19 layers. We will be writing 19 steps to create this uh, code. Yeah, yeah, but all those will be similar, no? So, just if we see yeah, one, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. One configuration will be differing. For example, I have a 16. Uh, uh, for example, I'm saying 16 yeah, yeah. convolution yeah. layer. Yes, okay. The 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 method which you are using is uh, all same. Okay. Only the properties we are giving, right? For example, I have to uh, change the uh, target size, right, from 240 to 224. Like that, you will be changing. So there is nothing to, uh, there is nothing difficult from the part where we, when we are creating our own model, there is nothing to be very difficult. Once you have created your first model, it will be very easy for you now. Sure. So for that first model, actually, I have covered all the theory part of it, but. Uh, to put it into practice uh, i just need a, an example model yeah sure ma'am i will share you ma'am share with you ma'am thank you so much sir yeah thank you uh, sir one more question from the participant yes, how sir. rcnn will differ from cnn if uh, both are dealing with image uh, i think it's a, it's a region based uh, cnn so it will uh, kind of a, it uh, uh, it deals with the region okay sir so that's how it works um uh, yeah ma'am Any more questions from the participants? Okay, if no questions, Nandini can wind it up. We can give a conclusion. Okay. Any queries, ma'am? Huh? Okay, sir. Thank you for the session, sir. Thank you for Thank the participants. Ah. Uh, Uh, you can join uh, around 2:30 pm afternoon for a uh, third session uh, you can join around 2:30 pm okay thank you thank you sir thank you for your very you. informative speech it was a nice session so thank participants you, also i think they have got a lot of ideas from you uh, thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you participants kindly do join us where at uh, 2:30 pm thank you Thank you madam thank you